Hi class, welcome back to our subject, Organization and Management. So for today, we're going to discuss Chapter 8, which is the introduction to the different functional areas of management. So to prepare you to become future leaders and managers, you must become familiar with the functional areas of management, the human resource management, marketing management, operations management, financial management, material and procurement management, office management, and information and communication technology management. So in doing so, you will be ready for the local and global challenges that you'll be inevitably meet in tomorrow's workplace. So managerial and leadership functions are essentially the same because all this aims to establish an environment for the effective and efficient performance of individuals and cooperate with one another in teams or groups of different organizations. So therefore, reading and understanding um, the this chapter or the lesson under this chapter will be beneficial to all persons who will one day join organizations. So not just business companies, but also non-business organizations such as government, educational and healthcare institutions, and other non-profit organizations. So that's why we're going to discuss these following functional areas because someday, um you may be or you may in, be involved in these following functional areas. So let's start with human resource management. Human resource management is also known as human capital. So it drives the performance of organizations along with other resources. So hence, understanding the HRM or the human resource management functions of management is very important. So ang dinidil dito sa human resource management is all about the human resources. So about the employees, about the staffs, and also the managers. So it is the whole human resource of the company. Company. So here are the following um, tasks or functions of human resource management. So they conduct the job analysis, planning labor need and recruiting, so selecting candidates for the job, orienting and training new employees, managing compensation or pay, providing incentives and benefits, so evaluating employees' performance, communicating, developing employees, building employee commitment, providing good working conditions, handling grievances, and industrial relations. So mo most of these topics have been already discussed under staffing. So ito yung mga ginagawa under human resource management. So, what's the importance of having human resource management, especially in an organization? So, human resource management deals with the management of people, which is the most important business resource. So, the money, materials, and information resources are not capable of moving the business activities without the aid of the primary performance drivers the human resources. So therefore, mastering the activities that are involved in human resources management, such as the recruitment, selection, placement, training and development is a must since all other management activities um, under the planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling could be done easily if organization managers practice proper human resources management. So it is very important kasi parang if the human resources are being managed well, so the other functions of the management, which is the planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling will be managed well also. So that's the importance of human resource management. Next one is marketing management. 
So, according to the marketing expert, Philip Cutler, so, marketing management is essentially demand management. So, this is because it involves influencing the level, timing, and composition of demand so that an organization may reach its goals. So, di ba, normally, again, ang goal ng isang organization, especially the businesses, is kumita. So, how can they get profit so through their customers so doon papasok yung demand so kapag maayos yung pagmamanage ng marketing mo so ito kasi yung pag-attract doon sa mga customers for them to acquire your service or for them to buy your goods so para kaya tinatawag din siyang demand management or yung pag-control ng demand So, to elaborate more the things that are being done under marketing management, here are some functions that includes under the marketing. So, you analyze, plan, implement, and control the goods, services, and ideas to create exchanges that satisfy customer needs and company goals. So, also the management of marketing resources. So, marketing resources include the salespeople, advertising, and marketing research. And then... Analyze, plan, and implement marketing programs that aim to bring about an expected level and mix of business deals with target markets. So, stimulate demands for the products of the company. Make crucial decisions that will ensure the company's competitiveness. And then, make sure that the marketing techniques employed are efficient, effective, and socially responsible or ethical. So again, under marketing management, so dito yung pag-attract and pag-analyze or pag-maintain or pag-manage ng demand ng mga customers dun sa goods or services na binibigay ng company or ng business mo. So, marketing management is important because it is the key organizational goal attainment. So, yung, ano ba yung organizational goal attainment natin? So, that's for our customer to be satisfied and for our business to gain profit. So, without major marketing management processes such as the planning, execution, pricing and promotion and distribution of goods, services, and ideas to create exchanges with target groups. So, yung pag-satisfy ng customers and pag-achieve ng goals natin ay hindi magiging possible. So, kapag walang maayos na marketing management. Kasi, how pwedeng maganda nga yung mga goods mo, maganda yung services mo, but if you cannot market properly, so how can you attain that goal? So, that's the importance of marketing management. Another functional areas in management is the operations management. So, the business managers today focus on productivity, the technology use, the quality of goods and services, the customer satisfaction, and speed. So, they are conscious that they need to innovate on their processes and activities in order to succeed in a highly competitive globalized market. So, because of these needs, the operations uh, management functions are needed to be implemented well. So, ito yung parang inaayos nyo na yung buong operations na nangyayari sa isang organization or sa isang business. So, for example, you're a accounting firm. So, yung pagpaprocess ng mga ginagawa nyo services to dun sa mga clients. So, paano nyo pa siya mas mai-improve to satisfy the customers and also parang mas maganda yung maging quality ng service na naibibigay mo. So, dito papasok yan sa operations management. So, the functions under operations management are the following. So, first one is overseeing the transformation processes that change resources into finished goods and services, improvement of productivity and competitive advantage, and then managing the sequence of activities and information along the whole course of the value chain. So, dito sa operations, parang yung buong operations so, na nagtatransform, for example, from the raw materials up to the finished 
finished goods na ibebenta sa market. And then ko paano yung pag-improve ng productivity for example ng mga gumagawa ng uh, mga ibebenta mo. And then how can you improve the quality? Yun nga the speed, the customer satisfaction, and then yung buong activity para mabuo yung mga ibebenta mo or yung mga service na ibibigay mo. So, yun yung inaayos dito sa operations management. So, what's the importance of operations management? So, hindi naman natin ikakaila na yung parang business environment natin today is characterized as highly competitive and fast-paced, especially in producing quality products and services. So, through the study of the essential operations, of the management, the businesses of different types and sizes may increase their chances of survival and success. So, kapag namamanage ng maayos yung operations ng business or ng organization, it is highly possible na mag-survive and mag-success yung business despite the high competitive um, environment that we have. Next one is the financial management. Gaining profit is the main goal of businesses. So, to attain this goal, managers must practice good financial management. And this, of course, starts with understanding the financial management functions of management. So, syempre, since um, gusto mo nga is makagain ka ng profit, so tama lang na minamanage mo yung mga nabanggit na natin kanina. So, yung operations, yung marketing, and also yung human resources mo. But, it is very important then na ito yung pagtinginan nyo ng, ay, pagtuunan din ng pansin. Kasi, dito din magre-revolve kung paano matutuloy yung operations ng businesses. So, this is the financial management functions. So, the functions under financial management include the following. So, first is taking charge of the company's financial policies and strategies, yung mga investments, capital structures, and dividend policies. And then, financial management and control. So, ito yung mga control sa finances, sa budget, sa cash flow of the entity, or yung sa mga expenses. And then, financial planning. So, financial planning is the process of setting financial objectives and determining what should be done to accomplish them. So, this includes financial forecasting, um, financial analysis, and financial performance evaluation. So, yung financial forecasting, so, you forecast the sales, the expected expenses, and then financial analysis, you analyze, for example, um, what we have already discussed last week about the liquidity ratio, the profitability ratio, and then financial performance evaluation. So, from the, for example, a certain period of time, it check mo kung ano yung nangyaring or kung ano yung result ng um, performance of our business during those times through um, looking, of course, through the financial statements. Financial management facilitates the choice of investments, financial policies, and operating mechanism of the organization in order to effectively achieve its goals and objectives. So, it includes maximizing its profits as well as those of its shareholders and stockholders. So, in doing so, financial managers are able to maximize the wealth of the organization and its stockholders or shareholders and satisfy other goals like providing good customer service, minimizing bankruptcy risk, and actively participating in present societal concerns. So, to accomplish the above-mentioned functions that give importance to financial management in organizations, control techniques that measure the company's financial soundness, management effectiveness, production and service efficiencies, and human resource attitudes and morale must also be considered. So, this include the following, the break-even chart that we already discussed, and also financial statements and financial ratios. 
So again, if yung mga nabanggit na natin kanina na mga functions, um, if na mamanage siya ng ayos, then that's okay. But if yung financial aspect is hindi na mamanage ng ayos, so there's still a high chance na hindi makapag hindi makasurvive yung business dito sa business environment na meron tayo today. So it is very important na na mamanage and na check yung performance ng businesses for certain periods of time. And then, um, kailangan din is makagawa ng proper management para mas ma-maximize yung profit or yung wealth ng organization. Kasi, again, pag mas maraming pera, mas maraming pwedeng magawa, we can expand more and we can also give incentives to your employees since para hindi nga sila mawala so papasok doon yung human resource so parang di ba if the financial aspect is well managed so yung flow or yung parang pera ng company is magagamit sa tama and then mas makakapagawa din tayo ng plans para mas umokay pa yung business so that's the importance of financial management Next one is material and procurement management. Material and procurement management ensures that all products are at the right place at the right time. So this includes inventory management, managing and planning materials, the logistical procurement of goods and services, and delivering products to customers. So tong material and procurement management are for um types of businesses na goods yung binebenta nila. So, dapat merong proper management of the inventory. So, simula pa lang dun sa supplier and then and then up to the customers or dun sa pagdadala dun sa customers nung goods. So, ito yung inaayos dito sa material and procurement management. So, what's the importance of the material management? So, material management is directly associated with the operational efficiency of an organization. So, yung um, operations management natin kanina, correlating din siya dito sa material and procurement management. So, a good material management system ensures that availability of the right materials in the production process with minimum wastage so as to cut losses. So, parang simula pa lang dun sa tamang materials yung nailalagay sa production for the final goods. So, parang dun pa lang machi-check mo na if maayos ba yung mga materials na yun, hindi ka ba malulugi dun, maganda ba yung magiging quality ng product na ilalabas mo or using those uh, materials. So, that's all under material and procurement management. Next one is office management. So, when it comes to office management, we're really talking about office efficiency and all the aspects that factor into the effective performance of office work. So, office management involves coordinating office activities and helping to maintain employee satisfaction. Actually, medyo papasok din siya dun sa operations management, but just to... Um, give importance dun sa mismong office management, nakahiwalay siya dito. So, in order to coordinate all the activities that are being done in the office and yung pag-maintain sa employee satisfaction, so, it is under the office management. So, as for the importance of office management, the keywords here are efficiency and effectiveness. So, when a business is properly managed, there is control over office activities, there will be um, reduction of company costs, there, the employees will be happy, and then the enterprise's activities will be all coordinated. And then, the last one is the Information and Communication Technology Management. 
So, management in the 21st century is driven by information and communication and digital network. So, computers quickly provide more information to a greater number of people, groups, and organization than ever before. Like, for example, we have the Google Drive, we can access to emails, we can send a message right away or the data to... Um, to different people around the globe. So, hence, the study of the information and communication technology management functions of management is relevant. So, especially nowadays that most of us is working from home. So, and then, alam naman natin na yung technology is fast-paced na din. So, um, all businesses or organization must also have their ICT management. The ICTM functions of management include the following. So, developing the organization's hardware, software, and other computing and communicating technology. So, developing the organization's management information system tailored to the needs of the firm's units. And then, encouraging e-commerce through internet use. So, um, all about the internet or all about the communication or all about how can we easily gather and um, send data to our clients or to our suppliers or to the other key member of our organization or businesses. So, why ICTM is very important. So, the widespread use of ICT has brought about the emergence of a knowledge-based society. So, due to easy access to information at low cost through the internet, um, management may use it for its different managerial functions. It may be used for scenario planning or identifying future scenarios in the business environment which may need careful planning. So, this also for decision making through the use of information generated by IT, um, aiding teamwork, facilitating productivity measurement or easy, low-cost communication worldwide selling through the internet, and then many others. So, so, it may be said, therefore, that ICT has revolutionized the business world. So, looking back around maybe 10 or 20 years ago, um, working from home is very hard and it is somehow impossible for other businesses or enterprises. But right now, as we can see, most of the people is kaya ng makapag-work from home and then other businesses or enterprises can still operate well and can and can still give quality services or products to their customers just by staying at home through this um proper management of the information and communication technology so, therefore, again, ICT functions must be managed well. So, again, before we close the Chapter 8, here are the different functional areas of management. Human resource, marketing, operations, financial management, material and procurement, office management, information and communication technology management so that's chapter eight so we have already finished the eight chapters under organization and management so for today we're also going to discuss the special topics in management it may not be instantly apparent, but our daily activities from the time we wake up in the morning up to the bedtime at night are ruled by the ventures of entrepreneurs. So the toothbrush, the toothpaste, the towel, soap, shampoo or conditioner, the clothes, our shoes, food, and the drink varieties 
home appliances, electronic gadgets, office equipment, transportation vehicles, and other things we use or consume daily are all products of entrepreneurial ventures. So hence, it is important to acknowledge our dependence on the innovative and creative nature of entrepreneurs. So the important role of entrepreneur, therefore, is to continuously look into the needs and wants of society and to find the best possible way beyond those currently offered. So for the day, for the special topics in management, we're going to discuss the small business management and entrepreneurship, the family business enterprises. So we're going to talk about some success stories of Filipino family business ventures and how to start or in starting a business, what are the legal forms and requirements that are needed? Innovative, creative, and intuitive thinking in business management helps entrepreneurs come up with great ideas or new strategies that may lead to the successful achievement of their goals, service, growth, and profitability. So the same entrepreneurial mindset is valuable in today's highly competitive and ever-changing business world. It answers the need for the creation of new products and the development of new services for society's benefit. So, in addition, entrepreneurship also has socio-economic contribution. It provides employment not only to the entrepreneur but to fellow Filipinos. So, thus helping ease unemployment, entrepreneurship provides additional sources of taxes for the government so more of this will be discussed on your entrepreneurship class but we are discussing this under special topics kasi yung mga small businesses naman or ang mga businesses or other organizations is magsisimula din yan sa maliit so parang dito sa mga businesses so magsisimula siya sa entrepreneurial venture like for example sa pag-invent for example ng toothbrush or ng tooth Space. So, from there, lumalaki and then para magkakaroon ka na ng isang buong kumpanya or ng isang buong organization. So, doon natin, ia-apply yung mga natutunan natin under organization and management. But also, even if small pa lang yung business mo, if it is well managed and maayos yung mga functions na nagagawa under management, so maganda na na-incorporate and na-apply mo na agad yung mga natutunan natin sa orgman. Next is family business enterprise. So globally, there are many successful family businesses run by entrepreneurs who have different stories to tell and different formulas for their business success. However, they possess some common characteristics such as creativity, innovativeness, service orientation, and the ability to take risks and do hard work among others. So slowly but surely, these characteristics pave the way toward their success in the world of business. So the stories in this chapter feature ordinary family members who despite of starting with meager capital and have persevered to produce competitive products or render good services that brought them to success in their chosen business endeavor. So, for today, we're going to know two success stories of Filipino family business ventures. So, the first success story is from the Gochanon family. Andrew Gochanon Sr. defied norms in life and business when he nurtured his company to become one of the Philippines' biggest conglomerates, the Philinvest Group. Andrew Sr. and his wife, Mercedes, saw potential business opportunities during their trips abroad. They interviewed small bank owners in the U.S. and followed their business models. From this, they adjusted the models to fit the Philippine setting. They made use of ideas that they got from their trips to Florida, U.S. for another business venture which is guarded subdivisions for the middle class in the mid-1960s. So, Mr. Gochanun revealed that aside from hard work, 
one needs to have the right attitude to succeed in life and in business. In his belief that women also deserve a place in the boardroom, he broke the family tradition when he involved his wife, Mercedes, in business management. He admitted that Mercedes was the one who implemented and executed some of his business plans and turned many of his visions and entrepreneurial ideas into realities. Interestingly, she did all this while raising their children. So, Mr. Gotchanun continues to search for new business opportunities, particularly through the use of the internet. So, kung mapapansin nyo, um, tung si Mr. Gotchanun, hindi lang feeling best, they also own the East West and other companies pa. So, parang yun ang nangyari, um, nangyari to from the time na, di ba, hindi naman usual na y- dun sa mga babae na nandun sila sa boardroom or andun sila sa management side. So, normally, nung mga time na to, um, nun, or nung nagsisimula sila, yung mga girls or yung mga babae, yung norm is sila yung nagre-raise ng mga children. So, hindi sila para nandun sa business uh, management. But, since Mr. Gotchanon broke that um, family tradition, so in-involve niya yung wife niya, and mas napaganda pa yung pag-implement at pag-execute ng mga business plans nila. So, another story is from the T family, so the owner of Metrobank. George SKT, one of Asia's top bankers and a recipient of an honorary doctorate degree from the University of Santa Tomas, started to work an early age. He was only 18 years old when he dropped out of school to help his family put up their business. So, the Wellington Flour Mills. He had to endure many hardships as a young businessman in what he described as an unfamiliar industry. In spite of inadequate bank financing and his limitations in the said business, he was able to help his father steer their flour mill to success. Inspired by their success and the experiences he gained in managing a business, George, at age 29, founded Metro Bank in 1962. And like before, he again had to undergo many difficulties in building it into one of the Philippines' largest and most trusted banks. The Metro Bank Group, PS Bank, Toyota Philippines, AXA Life Insurance, etc., in 2013, paid over 20 billion in taxes, providing that they indeed are very successful and that entrepreneurial traits like innovativeness, creativity, and ability to take calculated risk must be nurtured. So, Dr. George T. believes that lessons learned from experiences are lessons that you will never forget. The trust is not given and must be earned and that good banking is about trust and helping other people achieve their dreams. So I hope you've learned something from the life of Mr. Gachanon and Mr. T. Why not? Maybe someday, yung story nyo na, yung pinag-uusapan and dinidiscuss sa mga estudyante para mas ma-inspire sila for them to achieve what they really want and to achieve their dreams. So, for the last special topic, starting a business, legal forms, and requirements. The legal form of business is determined by its ownership or proprietorship. A business may be a single prop, a partnership, a corporation, or a cooperative. We have discussed previously the first three business ownership. Just to add, the cooperative's original purpose was to supply those involved with goods or service at lower cost compared to those bought from retailers. So later types of cooperative have emerged that include farmers, producers, and credit cooperatives. 
a group of officers called Board of Directors and Committees headed by a chairman manage the cooperative's activities. So, the cooperative office that runs the daily office work is usually hired. So, the cooperative's life is not affected by the death of any of its members nor by the selling of a member share. So, it is like the corporation. It can, however, be dissolved by a majority vote of the Board of Directors and a resolution signed by at least two-thirds of the general membership. So, quick background lang for the cooperative. But, if you can remember, we already discussed the other forms of businesses, which is the single proprietorship, the partnership, and cooperation. So, yung business, pwede siyang single proprietorship, so isa lang yung may-are, partnership, wherein two or more persons, and then for corporation, so meron tayong tinatawag ng mga shareholders or stockholders. So, the real question here is, why and where should a business be registered? So, businesses or entrepreneurial ventures have to be registered in compliance to Philippine laws. Without proper registration in authorized government agencies, the business cannot operate legally. Registering also gives credibility to businesses, hence helping earn the trust of customers, suppliers, partners, and other stakeholders. So, originally, it is um, illegal to, to have a business na hindi nare-register ng maayos sa Philippine laws or according to our Philippine laws and to other, to different government bodies. So, Registration documents have to be submitted to the Department of Trade and Industry and the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC for commercial registry. And then for clearance and securing a community tax certificate, so sa barangay office naman. And then for the business to operate, so you need the city mayor's office for mayor's permit and licenses. And then, for sector-specific licenses or permits, you need to have the permit from the city or national government agencies. For fire safety clearance, you need clearance from Bureau of Fire Protection. So, actually, itong fire safety clearance, it is usually done for the mayor's permit or yung mga business permit then, So, parang isa siya dun sa requirements. And then, for taxation purposes, of course, you need, to, you need to be registered in BIR or Bureau of Internal Revenue. And then, for employees' concerns, um, if you have employees, of course, you need to be registered as well to Pag-ibig or Home Development Mutual Fund, SSS, Social Security System, and PhilHealth, which is Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. And also, for your labor or for labor statistics, you also need to be registered in Department of Labor and Employment. So again, that's the why and where should a business be registered. And that concludes the different lessons and topics that we need to discuss under organization and management. This has been a great semester despite the new normal or new way of learning we are in. I hope you've learned something that can equip you to be a better professional and part of the organization and management of businesses and different organizations someday. I am grateful to be able to share my knowledge and experiences in the corporate world. So again, if you have any concerns, don't hesitate to message me. So once again, this is Organization and Management. Thank you class and God bless.